Yo guys, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Budios Boy Wrestling Fan Interview. Today I'm joined by my very special guest. She's crocheting right now, I think that's what she's doing uh, underneath the camera. <laughs> she is her upcoming match against Dan the Man at Dear Norma, April 3rd in Thompson, Connecticut. Defending the TOS Heavyweight Championship, Karen Bam Bam, how are you doing today? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. My school just announced that we're going in person full time. So starting next week, it's a little nerve wracking, but I, right. I mean, I, I prefer to be in school. So it is what it is. Yeah, that's good. I, I prefer to be in school as well, at least wrestling school. So, you know, I'll be <laughs> back soon <laughs> now that things are loosening up a bit. Now, um, how are you doing during this pandemic going on? Staying safe? healthy all that i've been pretty lucky not to have been sick and most of the people that are really close to me have stayed healthy so i'm like honestly just very blessed and i hope to keep it that way so you know i hope we all get through this together because it's been a real raggedy year <laughs> i'm tired of being inside <laughs> i want to hug people again and i want everybody to be cool so you know hopefully soon <laughs> with this vaccine coming in now, um, I do want to mention, I feel like an idiot because I just realized what I said when I introduced you. Um, I made a mistake <laughs> with the match card. You were going up against the debuting Vivacious, Vicious, wait, Vicious Vicky. She like, has so many names. Um, and Dan the Man is the special guest referee. I made a mistake. It's okay. It happens. Um, what's your mindset going in this match, especially as Dan the uh, Screw Man? as the referee <laughs> it's just like i felt like i should have expected it i was like oh, i wonder who and it's like you know i knew it wasn't gonna be dan but of course he he found a way to get in there and i'm just like of course i underestimated you as many times as we have fought but you know i'm just like look <laughs> i'm gonna do what i do i do the best that i can under the circumstances and if I got to lay hands on him. <laughs> now, um, obviously, um, you are crocheting. It looks like you just held up, like, the thing that you guys use. Um, what got you into crocheting and knitting a lot? Honestly, being inside. Like, I picked <laughs> up for a little bit, and then, I mean, I live alone, so I got pretty bored in here, and I was like, okay, this is something me and my bestie are going to do on Facebook chat. Facebook, you know, video and just bond with that. And yeah, we ended up, you know, considering starting a business. So, you know, got to multitask because it takes so much time <laughs> to make something. Um, have you ever thought about maybe making a, uh, like a, a pair of um, tidy whities for Dan to man? Because he's really, he's really scared of you, I think. So that's why he cheats a lot. <laughs> <laughs> might be good for him, especially, you know, in his old age. It's very absorbent. <laughs> so maybe I'll bring it to dear Norma. <laughs> now, one thing I want to bring up is um, Halloween, obviously, was three months ago in October. Everyone knows that. Um, you dressed up as the Little Mermaid from the Little Mermaid movie. And you knitted the costume yourself, am I correct? Yeah, I knitted the top to it. And then the bottom, I got <laughs> Um, what made you make that decision to make it yourself? We'll say you that you just did the whole costume. Puts you over me. Yes. <laughs> so I did the whole costume. <laughs> and, you know, for me, I just like tailor making stuff. Like, I mean, I used to make my own gear, too. So I really enjoy, like, just making something the specific way that I want it instead of having to go out and buy it. Because I like to be unique and original, which is different. So I know if I make it, I can do something that, you know, only I can see in my head and nobody else could like really get it the way I want. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, yesterday I had Brother Greatness on the show. Um, obviously, you know who that is. Um, and uh, one question that I brought up is you and him had a variety show on YouTube. Whatever happened to it? We're going to be bringing it back, you know, <laughs> um, my my good good friend brother greatness has just started 
you know, as an assistant trainer at a school and, you know, I'm starting this crochet business. So things have picked up for us in other parts of our life, but we are talking about it, planning, seeing who we want to have on, what direction that we want to go in. So it's going to be coming back, but, you know, we want to make sure we give it our full attention, you know. Now, um, what, what went on in your head? I might have asked this question the other day. I don't know if I did. <laughs> Bear with me. I'm really nervous because you're one of the most beautiful. You're you're really beautiful. And when I'm interviewing females, I get nervous compared to males. <laughs> so <laughs> that's so cute. Don't be nervous. I'm just a regular person. <laughs> I'm I'm like tripping over my words because I'm like I'm trying not to embarrass myself, but I am embarrassing myself. You're so. not. <laughs> um so to re-explain the question that i asked the other day what is it like to be on the top of the tos roster as the heavyweight champion for me it, it's really humbling and like i'm very passionate about women and wrestling and just you know being the best representative that I can and showing that you know it's about more than just how you look or you know just you know, representing a certain image, like, you know, there's a lot of talented women out there. And so just to be able to represent that, you know, we can be the face of a company and represent that company and we have the skill to go against anybody. That's just my overall goal. And for me, it's really humbling to even have been given the opportunity to succeed in that way. You know, I've been at TOS for a very long time, and that's something that I enjoy is growing and building with a company. And, you know, I just feel so, like, appreciative, especially with the response that I've gotten. So, you know. Nice. Um, what went on in your mind when you heard the three count against Stan the Man and winning the title back in August? It it was it was humbling because <laughs> you know with COVID and everything since like March of last year we've been doing like mostly empty arena shows so it had been so long before being in front of a crowd and so you don't even hear that you got so used to not even hearing anything and then with Dan Dan is not an easy opponent at all he's somebody he will fight you <laughs> you know so that was that was a fight that was twenty minutes of fight there so just to get that relief like I yeah I did it what like it was just like just uh whew, like words can't describe honestly <laughs> now um back in October scary fights um and then it got changed to Halloween throwdown not sure why that happened no one knows actually um <laughs> you were in a tag team match against Dan the man and a mystery partner which no one ever showed up, <laughs> so that was strange. Um, and your partner was surprisingly Ref Gina, a.k.a. Blue Shoes, who will be on the show for her round two interview tomorrow. Make sure to stay tuned for that, guys. Um, why did you – what What made you pick her as your partner? And she was even surprised. Everyone could see that at that show. It was just – you know, it it was time because Dan has been a menace and, you know, he hasn't been especially kind to Gina and he came after her just for counting three. I mean, like, you lost. Your shoulders were down. That's not Gina's fault. That's your fault. So I felt like it it was well-deserved for her to get an opportunity to get, you know, her payback to him, you know, like, I feel like it's so important to, like, stand up for yourself, you know? Like, yeah, you know, she's a referee, and, like, wrestling's not her thing, and she may never wrestle again, but, like, you know, you should stand up for yourself, even if you don't win, and we didn't, but just the fact of, like, showing people, like, you can't bully me is so important. Nice, nice. Um, do you have anyone that you would like to face? Uh, don't overlook your match with Vicky in uh, April, but... After that match is finished, and hopefully you still are the champion, I know you'll still be the champion in my head. Um, <laughs> anywhere, anyone that you would like to face after that match? I honestly, I'm just like a person who wants to like 
wrestle any and like everybody but there's been like a lot of like interesting faces making it to TOS like me and Alec Price had a bit of an exchange <laughs> you know, on Twitter talking that yim yam all that smack so you know if he wants to smoke he can get it you know someone suggested Mike Verna and he's really dope so I wouldn't mind that way you know I honestly just want to wrestle everyone and anyone regardless gender size where you live <laughs> your style like I'm with it now um according to my uh my searching information on you I'm not a stalker that's not how the question was supposed to come out but um <laughs> According to my research, um, you actually used to be a part of Team Shazam with Dan the Man, and then you got out of it. Um, how did you become associated with that team? It was just, you know, I used to have the Thunderbolt on my gear when I was making it. And, you know, at the time I was a little bit different. I was newer, so, you know. You get, you get caught in the razzle dazzle, you know, there's all this, you know, flash and, and, you know, this, you know, appearance to dance. So it's like, okay, you know, I'm a roll with it, but, you know, I started, you know, going into my own and representing my own thing later on, you know, but when you're trying to find yourself, it's like sometimes, you know, certain things get to be appealing and, you know. You got to look at other people and then they can take you out of their, your show yeah you know because i was still finding myself you know like i said tos is one of like the first places i started wrestling when i expanded out of brooklyn so you know just you know younger girl trying to find my way and you know figure out how to go about things but you live and you learn <laughs> <laughs> Now, throughout quarantine, a lot of, I mean, not just wrestlers in general, but most of my social media is full of wrestlers that have their own home gym and they just went out all out trying to find equipment. Um, what have you done to stay in shape in your workouts throughout quarantine? Any home gym equipment? Um, I keep it very, very simple. Um, when I was in the gym, I was really like, you know, lifting a lot of weight like I deadlift almost like 300 pounds and squat all this weight but like I felt like taking a different approach and not like you know using so much extra equipment so I've usually I just have like a yoga mat I have like two sets of dumbbells resistance bands and I keep it like with my body weight mm -hmm. I'm trying to be diverse you know I was so focused on like strength and I'm already strong so I'm like I'm working on my flexibility you know, yoga, coordination, you know, so I do yoga, I do like a lot of mobility work, I do a lot of cardio, I go out and run, at least when it's warmer, and it gets warmer again, I go for and things like that, so yeah, I'm really enjoying like the variety that I'm getting. Um, What's your diet been like over quarantine? It's changed so much. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's been hard for like most people because you know we're not out and about as much and then you're just sitting at home with the fridge or at least I am so um but for me I keep it pretty diverse um I was mostly or entirely vegetarian so I've kind of diversified that a bit but I still do eat my tofu and stuff but I just do intermittent fasting because it works for me I just eat between two and eight have some flexibility so I made, you know, a little egg wrap for breakfast. And then I got some, you know, ground beef. I'm going to make a taco salad later. And then that's it. I'll wait till 2 p.m. tomorrow to eat again. <laughs> nice. Nice. Now, um, I like playing games with my uh, guests on these shows. And this game that we're about to play, I never have a name for it. But I'm going to say a wrestler's name. And you have to describe him in one word. One word. Okay. <laughs> Um, it's all pretty much test of strength talent. So, um, all right, we're gonna start now. Slick okay. Wagner Brown, SWB. It's a mentor. Bobby Ocean. Amazing. Dan Man. Evil. <laughs> Ref Gina, <laughs> blue shoes. Oh, baby. <laughs> um, Vivacious Vicky. Jersey. <laughs> Brother Greatness. 
Ooh, hallelujah. <laughs> Alec Price. Mm, cocky. <laughs> All of the members of the firm, Sammy Diaz, Elijah Six, Jay Bricks, and the Smurf. <laughs> Hmm. Well, you can name them like once, like one by one, not the whole entire thing. I'll do the whole thing. Um, <laughs> Ooh. I'll, say, I'll say diverse. <laughs> <laughs> Cold Cash, Ryan Frost, and TJ Howell the third. I'll call them my booze. <laughs> <laughs> the stepdads. Ooh, wholesome. Um, let's see who else. Oh, the returning Mike Verna. Oh, say strong. <laughs> let's see who else. Who else? Who else? I'm trying to think. Jay Freddie, the tag team partner of SWB. I'm super accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> Itchy Bond. Ooh. Hmm. I want to come up with a good word, though. I would say pretty maybe interesting or captivating. I'm not sure. One of those. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, he's not a wrestler, but he is part of the wrestling community. Uh, Don Kincaid. What are your thoughts on Don Kincaid? I love asking que- this question to people <laughs> that know him because the responses are just so good. Oh, I'll say wacky. Just such a fun person. <laughs> I love wacky. <laughs> now, do you ever fear that I had um, HBO on last night? Oh, wait. Scratch that question. HBO, I've went to Jomar. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hmm. Hmm. That's my word. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> His former tag team partner the, from the Bellow Twins, Ty Shine. Hmm. <laughs> you can't use that word again. You gotta come up with something different. <laughs> Yeah, I should have used a different word. (laughs) (laughs) I'll say, it's cool. Cool. Nice. Um, I'm out of people for this game, so (laughs) thanks for playing the game. You're welcome. All right. So the next question is actually if you could elaborate more on Don Kincaid, because yesterday I had HBO on my show. And he said he's scared of Don that he's going to pop up out of nowhere. Whether he's <laughs> using the bathroom, getting a drink, going to his car, even going to the ATM, he's just going to pop up. Um, what are your thoughts on Don Kincaid? Did you, uh, do you ever fear that he'll pop up out of nowhere in your life? You know what? If I lived in Connecticut, I would probably have that fear. But I'm all the way in Queens, so I think I'm safe for now. <laughs> <laughs> but... You know, I think it's just awesome because in Connecticut, I feel like it's such a, like, tight-knit wrestling community. So to see familiar faces is always great. And, you know, I feel like it's definitely cool to have fans that are involved. Because, I mean, we can't do this if nobody want to watch it and nobody cares. So, you know, just to show up and just make what we do more fun and more full is just, it's dope. <laughs> now... What's it like to be a wrestler that has a really, really short theme song that the DJ has to play it twice during your entrance? (laughs) (laughs) I I don't know if the song is short. It's more my interest is long. I do so many shenanigans on the way out, and I have to be mindful of that. I just, I take my time. (laughs) Especially because I've been in the main event the past few times. So it's like, ah, ah, I'm not holding anybody up. Nobody. (laughs) You're the queen of the show. You're the queen of the show then. (laughs) So I guess I I do need a longer song since I want to take so much time. (laughs) 
Now, um, do you ever think you'll come out as, like, the Undertaker? Because he has a long entrance. And it could be, like, two feet away from the ring. And it'll take him 20 minutes to get into the ring. I could absolutely do that. I could really take that amount of time. <laughs> Go to everybody individually. Oh, get a drink. Water, come back. Do a little dance. <laughs> <laughs> Now, when you come out to the ring, you have this giant feather fan. Is, is that what it is? Yeah. Um, what made you want to use that as an accessory coming out to the ring? I'm really, like, inspired by burlesque and stuff like that. I love, like, the, the flash and the glamour of it. So I use, like, the inspiration of it with the stones and the fringe and the feather fan and I always had some kind of feathers on me because I used to use like the boas and I would have like, you know, a little skirt made of boas and then I moved on into the, you know, the large fans and yeah, definitely be some different feathers coming too because I like to change it up and keep it fresh. Yeah, you don't want to stay the same forever. Otherwise people will get bored. So. (laughs) Now, what made you want to become a wrestler? For me, I'm kind of different because, like, I wasn't a person that always dreamed of it. I've always been kind of more of, like, a practical child for some reason. (laughs) It might be because, you know, with astrology, I have, like, that Capricorn rising. So I'm always very, like, uh, think things through. But, I mean, as I got older, I kind of just started saying, like, what do I want to do with my life? And, like, you know, I got drawn to it, you know. Watching it, something in me just said, like, try this, you know, you know, give it a shot. So I came in, no expectations, and I kind of fell in love. Even though I was bumped and bruised up, I was hurt <laughs> the first day from my neck to my toes. But I just kept coming back and kept trying to learn more. And I'm still trying to learn more and, you know, do more. So as long where, as- where would you like to be in wrestling? Um, I'm definitely wanting to travel more. Um, 2019 was like the main first year where I was really like working as many shows as possible. And then 2020 got cut short a little bit with the pandemic. But now that things are starting to come back, I'm trying to get more dates outside. So I'll be going to Maine next weekend and hoping to go to Florida in February and hopefully down South as well. I'm discussing some things. So, you know, I'm just trying to travel as much and break into as many markets as possible. And then hopefully in 2022, we can start thinking about, you know, contract ideally. <laughs> now, um, when Dan the man couldn't, didn't find a partner, although he had Talia and Jeanette come out and then she like just walked away. It was weird. And then there's some other person too that was dressed as a ref. I don't know if that was a fan or like dressed as a referee for Halloween. I'm not sure. I really don't know. Um, what were your thoughts that uh, Dan the Man could not find a partner? You know, I, I feel like because who it was, it was Aubrey and Talia Jeanette. That Talia was dressed up as me and then Aubrey was dressed up as Gina for Halloween. But that was a part of his shenanigans. He's always doing some underhanded stuff because they actually got dismissed from the ring because they were beating up on me (laughs) when I came after Dan. And then even after that, (laughs) then someone else from the firm comes out and starts beating up on Gina, you know, so then I got to fight them to the back. I don't even remember because I was just like in a tizzy. I just got beat up for like (laughs) 10 minutes, but (laughs) it was just... It's like, again, of course, it's like it can't be direct. It wasn't going to be a clean tag match, two and two. It was going to be all these other people coming and sneaking in and doing underhanded stuff because that's that's Dan. That's, that's what he does. <laughs> now, what made you decide that your finishing move was going to be a giant splash to your opponent? It just works with, you know, who I am. I was doing... um a second rope leg drop before, but then, you know, I call myself the Squish and Bish Express, so I figured, you know, I drop would, you know, be a little more fitting, and of course, with me, I like to keep it fresh, so I decided to do that, and honestly, I think it can't fail, so I'm gonna keep using it till it 
does. <laughs> <laughs> now, the other day on the fan round table, you were the special guest. What were your thoughts when uh, Mike Drinkwater, uh, even though that's not his real last name, but we call him Drinkwater because it's pretty much spelled that way. And he said, Dan Man <laughs> is his champion. What were your thoughts when he said that? What did you want to do to him? Like strangle him through the camera? I would love to say, but, you know, I'll just give him a hug, you know? It's just like, look, maybe you're in a drought. Maybe, you know, you haven't got a chance to warm up to me. It's okay, you know? Like, some people are resistant to change. Dan's been the longest reigning champion. It's okay if you don't believe it, but I'm here, <laughs> you know? It's, it's been done. He's been beaten, and it's okay, so I'll just embrace you. It's okay. It's okay to embrace him. It won't hurt you. <laughs> now, um, I'm I'm actually out of questions, and we did go over 20 minutes, so round of applause for both of us. Before we wrap it up, I want to flip the script a little bit. That's what I like to do. Do you have any questions for me? Oh, yes. I know you were to training at TOS. How was that for you? It was fun. It was also really scary because, like, Everyone else that was there, like, went to either one before or what, I, or was already, like, a training, in training. So it kind of felt like I was, like, the the outsider. But it was, like, really, it was really surreal because I never thought that I would be in a ring like that. Um, it was fun to, like, be able to try it. Um, I did, do you know who Wrecking Ball Ligurski is? Yep. So um, we were practicing how to exit the ring and uh slick he wanted everyone to do like three different moves through the middle rope over the top and then like jump over the top rope and like land like your hand on the apron i was terrified because from a fan's perspective the ring don't really seem that big but when you're inside of it it's it's pretty big and um i ended up uh, flipping over like when you had to like lock your hands underneath the rope and then flip back i was scared and i ended up getting caught by wrecking ball Ligursi, which is embarrassing but also was kind of like kind of like a funny moment so um yeah it, it was really fun and i definitely want to become a wrestler but my more like realistic job um i want to be a sportscaster like this like i want to do interviews so if i if wrestling doesn't work out i can still do interviews like this so you know, so you know, it's good to have you know more than one thing that you're yeah. passionate about, especially mm -hmm. when they tie in together. So, mm -hmm. and even in the wrestling world, like there's a job for everyone. Like not just wrestlers, you can be a ref, an announcer, a commentator, the DJ who plays the song twice. Cause someone d d doesn't get to the ring on time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it took you a second to understand what I said. <laughs> What's that about? Lord. <laughs> um, is there anything that you would like to promote on this interview? Okay, well, um, coming up February 6th, I'll be at Vacation Land Pro with my co-host, Brother Greatness. Um, a lot of people have been asking where they can train in New York City, so if you're dedicated to it, definitely uh, check out T2T Wrestling. You know, where they have a lot of great trainers and an awesome environment. Be on the lookout for the Chocolate Greatness Variety Show coming back soon <laughs> this year. And, yeah, you can follow me, Twitter, Instagram, Karen B. Ren uh, yes, Karen B. Renee, Twitter, IG, or I have my Karen Bam Bam Facebook page. So. And well, thank you. Well, thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. I'm glad that we finally got to do this. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next interview. Stay tuned.